All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Today we are going to be talking about all the details of our kitchen island that we put in our barn dominium. We get lots of questions. It's something that you need to consider when you're designing your own post frame home, which we can help you out with. You can email us, design at Mr. Post Frame. We can help you design your entire barn dominium, garage, shop, whatever the case may be. Also, we have a Patreon group. It's specifically for self builders. Um, we talk about different self-building topics every month. You get to ask questions. We do a live every month. It's a great community of other self-builders that you can share your knowledge with, share experiences. It's a great group. It's really turning out to be pretty awesome. So check that out. But let's go ahead and jump in uh, to our island. We're going to go through the whole thing, how we set it up, why we set it up that way, kind of the dimensions, space um, around it. So let's get going. Kitchen sink here. It's got to go on this base. So as soon as Emily is ready to help me, we're going to move this out of the box and see what we're working with here. We've got all the outside cabinets hung. We don't have any of the crown molding on yet, but stoves installed, refrigerators installed. We'll work on getting this island all set up, and I think for the time being, until we get our countertops in, I'm going to take some plywood and put over the top so we can start utilizing this area. So what do I need to do? We got to cut this out because this is another apron front sink, right? <laughs> yeah. So there isn't actually a shelf in this cabinet, so. What I'm gonna do is I'll measure from here to here, and then I'll block it on both sides. Hopefully that looks a little more than a two by four. Maybe, I don't know, let's get a tape measure and measure. Looks like we gotta bring it up one, about one and three quarter inches. So we'll take a two by four and then I'll uh, cut a quarter inch shim with the table saw and I'll block it on both sides. And then underneath, because this sink is so heavy, I'll build uh, some supports right there that are underneath that two by four to really give it some strength. So then we'll just have to cut a hole here for the drain and our holes back here for all of our uh, faucet stuff. All right guys, I cut some two by fours. I ripped them down on my table saw by an eighth inch so I can add a half inch of plywood to get to the inch and seven eighths I need. So we're gonna take the sink out, temporarily set these in, set the sink back in to make sure that it fits. So we gotta take a little more off, so I'll just run that, um, those two by fours through, then try it again. See, we got a little clearance there. A little clearance there which is what we want now we'll lay this on its back get this piece marked out and then uh, this piece just pops off the uh, base so all I have to do is uh, take that outside and cut it you guys can see these porcelain sinks aren't perfectly flat across the top you know it's kind of hard to see here but we're we're even right here but then it dips down a little bit right here in the middle and then we're even back over here. So it's important, I like to just lay the sink up here and then mark it out with tape. Awesome. 
All right, we got this cut in. I'm gonna put trim on this like I did all the bathroom sinks. It's not a bad cut though. I got this marked down in there. I'm gonna cut that out probably a couple inches bigger because there's gonna be a garbage disposal. I got blocks to hold it from going back. I have plenty of room for all my faucets to come up through here, which I'll have to drill holes through here as well. And then we have blocks down here on both sides, holding all that up. All right, so we're marking for all these pipes. We've got water lines. I got one hot water line for our two dishwashers. We're gonna have a dishwasher on each side of the sink. And then we have the hot and cold for just the sink. And then we have all of our electric electrical circuits coming up through here, which there will be a junction box underneath. I have to cut this section out so I'll have enough room to reach up in here and hook on all of my sink hookups. This will be for my drain. That will be for the electrical conduit. And that's the other three holes that I gotta do. So we're gonna take this outside, cut all these and then see how we did. I wish that was a little bit bigger around, but I think I can get that glued on there. So now it's time to square this up and start attaching the other cabinets to it. All right guys, so I just finished up the island cabinets. Not too bad. The concrete was high in the middle. And so I had to shim it on the two ends a little bit on this side to get it level. And then actually quite a bit on this side. So it's down about three quarter to three eighths here. So what I did is I took some of that flooring and I cut pieces and then screwed them. I turned this cabinet upside down and screwed them to the inside so it sits on those instead of having shims. So once I put my base, um, I have three inch base on this, that'll help hold this where it needs to be as well. Another thing I did was I took some of that hardwood flooring and I screwed it, I put it, laid it across here so it was touching the concrete and then screwed it into the cabinets to help hold this part up because there's you can see that had to be up a little bit and then to keep the whole all of these are screwed together now in level plumb and to keep this whole thing right there without ever moving i took some angle put a 3 8 bolt into the concrete and then two screws through this three quarter inch hardwood and then into the three quarter inch plywood of the cabinet. So this thing's rock solid. I got one here and I have one right here. So if you can see, I mean, this thing doesn't move at all. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's a little bit of work getting it together 
What I did was I laid these three cabinets all on their back on the floor and screwed them together through the sides. So all three of these cabinets were screwed together. So it was basically like one big cabinet and then Emily and I stood it up and then it was really easy to level because it was all locked together. So we just shimmed it to get it level. Then we attached the kitchen sink cabinet and then all we had to do was square and plumb up these end cabinets and make them flush here. So that was pretty easy. We got a dishwasher here and a dishwasher here. And I brought one in to make sure it fits in that space and it does. So now that we know we're going to fit, um, I'm going to go Go ahead and slide that in there. So we got this one here and then we'll have another one up there. But I have four circuits coming in here. We have the dishwasher, dishwashers, um, we have the garbage disposal, and we have two outlets. One on each end of the cabinet, which will be roughly somewhere in here. So I have this junction box. It's gonna mount right up in here somewhere. And that's what'll be basically house all the connections and then I'll come out of there probably with uh, flexible armored cable to go to everything I need to. We are going to start the trimming process here in the kitchen. And we're gonna start here with the island because in order for me to finish all the electrical, I need to have these uh, deco doors put on the end. And basically what it is, is it's two doors, basically frames, and it makes it look like doors. So Emily and I are gonna put these on. Basically all we have to do is square them up and then we are just going to trim nail them in and then we can fill the holes with the filler and you won't even see them. So then this trim will go down here and then there's also a scribe molding we can put along here if we feel like we need to which we might have to just because this island wasn't perfectly level so I had to space it off the ground on this end. Alright guys, I'm going to hook up my two dishwashers, and I want them both to go into the garbage disposal. There's only one connector on the garbage disposal, so I ordered a Y. So it's a barbed Y, so I have two inlets. So one dishwasher will come in here, one will come in here. And then I have this dishwasher adapter. This hooks on to the garbage disposal, and then the barbed fitting for the Y. So I got that clamped on there. I can climb up under there and clamp this to the garbage disposal. I actually might wait and get my hoses hooked up to this and clamped on and then hook it to the garbage disposal. I'm not sure how hard it's gonna be. All right, so we have our water line hooked up. We have our drain hose ready. Lastly, we have to get our electrical. So I have an armored cable that hooks up to the box right there. So we're gonna go ahead and get that on there, get our wires hooked up there, and then we'll drill two holes in the bottom, one for the electrical, one for the water line, and then we'll drill one up. I prefer to drill one up high for the drain hose. These cabinets are 24 inches deep. 
and the dishwasher comes back to 21 inches. So I like to put the drain hose up here high. And then I get my high loop here. And then when I come in to the cabinet, I can just drop it down right in to my garbage disposal. So I'll show you when it's all hooked up. You just have to make sure, measure your dishwasher, do a test fit, see how far it goes back. Mine goes back 21 inches. So my hose, um, it's actually attached to the side here. And the way the manufacturer has, this is a GE, it comes up, does a loop, comes back down, comes around, and then it'll go up high, and then drop down in to the garbage disposal. So we'll be good. My garbage disposal inlet is at 22 inches, so we're way above that 18 inches. line, water line, and my drain. Now we just have to get our sound insulation put over the top and then slide this all back in there. We got the electric hooked up, we got the water hooked up, and then I just gotta pull the drain hose through the top. All right guys, the last step is to hook both our dishwasher pipes to this Y, which I got one attached. I'll attach this one to here. And then this gets attached right there. So we'll just give you an overview of the island to start out. We have a width of a little over 50 inches. And then the length is 10 foot 4 inches. We have a quartz countertop, um, which is kind of personal preference. We have a farm sink in the middle. And when you think about designing your kitchen, um, if you're gonna have an island in it, I always like to think about where I wanna look at when I'm standing at the kitchen sink. And so this is why we kind of designed our great room with all the windows, fireplace and everything. Cause you spend a lot of time in the kitchen and that way, you know, we could look out all the windows. So this is a, I believe a 32 inch farm sink kind of it's centered in the middle we chose to do two dishwashers one because we have three kids and we're constantly doing dishes and i don't like any dishes in the sink so we always have a place to put the dishes when they're done one cool thing that we did is we put these little magnetic signs on there so you know whether it's uh, dirty or clean um, that just kind of helps out with where you can put your dishes we have 24 inch deep cabinets on one side so this front cabinet comes two feet and then we have a one foot cabinet in the back and i cho chose to make these actual cabinets with shelves even though we set our chairs all up along here i wanted to utilize this as extra storage so we have a big garden we can a lot so this is where we store a lot of our canned goods um, for use during the, the year works out really nice it's a great way to utilize that space instead of it just being a uh, dead space as far as the overhang on the island 
can see if I buff that up, we are 12 inches. And if we slide this chair up here, 12 inches I feel like is a really, really comfortable um, distance. And at that distance, you don't have to have any metal supports or anything supporting um, your countertop. If you were to go out, say 18 inches or even further, you're gonna have to build in some kind of support. Um, typically what we'll do with that is we'll use like 1 8 inch um, metal flat stock and then we'll kind of router out the top portion of the cabinet and so it can come out here and support it. These are frameless cabinets so that would be a little bit more difficult in this situation because when you have frameless cabinets your doors go all the way up to the top but you will be really happy with a one foot overhang for seating. It's real comfortable, you feel like you're at the right distance away. Um, obviously most places are going to require you to have power so we have an outlet uh, on one end uh, actually on both ends of the cabinet and how I ran that wire is we used electrical conduit from our main box and I don't know if you can see in there it pops up right there there we go so you can see the conduit comes up through the bottom comes into that junction box and then we use flexible flexible cable to run to our outlets and then you can see where our plumbing comes up into the bottom of the base of the cabinet we use two inch pvc to bring our water lines up all that kind of good stuff so we run a garbage disposal on our main sink one thing i like to do with all my cabinets is i always put like a pad in the bottom of this um, just think it makes it feel a little bit better but I'll try to show you the plumbing how we hooked up the double dishwasher you can see that Y right there so both dishwashers have a high loop and then they come into that Y and go in to the garbage disposal so when it comes to the wiring uh, and the circuits that I ran to the island I think I ran four circuits here I have a circuit for each of the dishwashers, I have a circuit for the garbage disposal, and then I have a circuit for just the uh, 20 amp outlets. So it doesn't hurt to run, you know, pull extra wire. Um, obviously we have conduit, so we could always pull more later, but it's always easier to pull them all at once. So just make sure you pull enough uh, circuits to your island. So if you wanna add something, you always have it in that junction box that you can do that. Um, I doubt I'll ever add anything. Um, we have outlets, we have garbage disposal, all that kind of good stuff. So I don't think we're going to end up adding any, but that's one thing to think about is how many circuits you need. In most kitchens, in most places, you're going to have to have uh, dedicated 20 amp uh, circuits for your island. So that's going to be one circuit. You're going to have to have a dedicated circuit for your garbage disposal. And then I ran each of my dishwashers on their own circuit. You know, one circuit would have been plenty, but... Um, we just have them on their own so if one go you know for some reason we'd lose one we wouldn't lose both of them so on the left side of our island we have our gub our double take two on the garbage can emily did not want you guys to see that we actually had garbage in our garbage cans so this is the drawer where our garbage cans are kept they are never empty but you can see they look pretty for the video we chose to keep it here on the end because it's easy transition to the mudroom, to the garage. And yes, I told them that you wanted them to see pretty clean garbage cans. Because garbage is disgusting. On the other end, we have just some cabinets for storage. Um, got our silverware. This has got like a hidden door in it, so it's kind of a double decker. Just kind of nice. Allows you to have a lot of extra space in there. Um, as far as installing your cabinet, if you're installing it on concrete, one thing to think about is this concrete's never going to be perfectly level. So what I do is I'll shoot, uh, I'll mark it out with tape on the floor, find the highest point with my laser, and then I will add blocking to my cabinets as I install them uh, to get them the right height so it's perfectly level. And then when we trim it out, we'll use a scribe trim at the bottom which is a, it's kind of a flexible trim that you can push all the way down to the floor to hide any 
um, imperfection in the concrete height. The next thing I want to talk about is that we get a lot of questions on is how much space should you have between your island and your cabinets on the other side. We put a tape across here. We have basically 47 inches and that's a good amount of space. I feel like when two of us are in here we can pass. If you pull the dishwasher door down you can still get around the outside. Same thing goes with the oven. When you pull the oven door down you still have a couple feet that you can get around so when you're pulling hot dishes or whatever out of there you can this isn't just um, all the way over the cabinet so you'll see a lot of places where this distance isn't uh, enough and when you have a door down you can't get around uh, safely or easily I guess just something to think about and then on this end of the island the space is a little bit less I think so if we go just to the handles we're about 39 inches counter to counter we're back up to that 47 inches so our refrigerator your refrigerators are typically going to stick out a little bit further this is a cabinet depth um, refrigerator so it sits in further than normal which is what we like um, but you got to take that in consideration if you had a normal size fridge that's going to stick out three or four more inches so you're going to lose more space there um, our, our, the reason we like these is because they sit closer to the wall. I think they look nicer. And then we always have a secondary fridge for just extra storage. The cabinets um, came from our cabinet partner, cabinetdirect.com, which we'll leave a link in the description. We have a discount for you guys if you're interested in going that route. They will design your whole layout for you. They have painted cabinets, stained cabinets, uh, like three different levels that you can choose from. So another question we get a lot of is do you have to have these posts here? And that just depends on the size of header and the span, obviously. I would not have had to have that post. We did it more of just kind of the look we were going for. But I could have taken that middle one out if I wanted to. But if you're going to have posts or something, you got to think about, you know, that space as well. We put about 35 inches between the edge of the counter and this post and that gives us plenty of room to pull out a chair still get in and out of there uh, fairly simply the faucet that we use is a Fister faucet um, got the pull down head on it swivels we got this uh, metal grate in here in the sink just kind of helps keep your dishes off of the um, bottom of the sink. We have our garbage disposal button right there. Um, that's uh, an air operated one so there's no wires or anything here so if water was to get in there or anything you're not going to have a problem with shortening it out. That's a, a good thing to add. We just had them drill a hole for that specifically. You can put when they install your countertop, you can have them drill holes for soap if you wanted or anything else. Um, Emily just wanted just the hole for the faucet and then we always like these just because it's a nice easy place to turn your um, garbage disposal on and off. So our appliances came from Plessers. Uh, we will give you uh, put a link for that as well. Um, that's where all of our appliances came from. These are GE. We've had really good luck with them. That's uh, the cafe line. You know some people Everybody's different, but we've had really good luck with our GE appliances, so we'll leave a link to that. So all of our hardware, or I guess I should say handles, are from Hickory Hardware. We'll leave a link to that. That's where all the handles came from in the kitchen. Same for those handles right there. But if you guys have any questions on any of this, we will leave links to all of the products that we use here on this island. Um, I think I covered everything, probably covered a lot of the questions we get. If you have any additional, leave them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. All right, as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video.